so happy we alive. Good evening. I'm Patrick Moore, and welcome to Louisville Late Night. This evening, we're privileged to be at the junction of 16th and Maple, and uh, we're here today to visit with a person who's well known in Louisville, who's spent a great deal of his life energy working for causes of social justice here in the Louisville community. I'm speaking, of course, of the Reverend Lewis Coleman. And Reverend Coleman has agreed to visit with us today and give us an update on his many activities working for social justice here in Louisville, Kentucky. Let's welcome Dr. Coleman. Good evening and welcome to Louisville Late Night. This evening we're privileged to have with us the Reverend Lewis Coleman, who has just been named one of the power people in Louisville, Kentucky, one of the top power people. And uh, in, in this issue of Louisville Magazine, right here, Power People, this is the very latest issue. Louisville Magazine says that uh, the Reverend Lewis Coleman, pastor, First Congregational Methodist Church, and director of the Justice Resource Center, that Coleman is a man who is equally hated, loved, feared, and admired. Actually, the quote is a man who is equally loved, hated, feared, and admired. Coleman has been speaking out often through a bullhorn against racial and economic injustice longer and louder than anyone else in the city. And then it goes on to say that the Reverend Coleman's top priority is, quote, to publish a daily newspaper that will have the heart, courage, and integrity to stand against the day-to-day -day injustices that continue to oppress disenfranchised African Americans and minorities. And we are just absolutely thrilled to have the Reverend Coleman right there with us today in person on, on Louisville Late Night. And is it okay to call you Lewis or do you prefer Reverend Coleman? Well, or? Just call me Rev. You know, <laughs> Rev? I'm very comfortable with that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, but I, I'm, I am just uh, 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 just enthusiastic about uh, appearing on your show uh, tonight. Uh, um, you uh, just educated me about the show. Uh, you're talking to a senior citizen <laughs> who doesn't look at much TV. I uh, uh -huh. spend most of my time um, reading the Word of God and uh, uh, doing what I have to do in this community and throughout the state. Uh, I represent the Justice Resource Center. Uh, mainly, and it's an organization that fights for uh, justice and equality all over the state of Kentucky. And whoever is oppressed, whoever is disenfranchised, whether it be black, white, red, or yellow, we stand for poor people because poor people many times do not have a voice. And because we as poor people do not have a voice, we say what normally people feel very uncomfortable in saying, challenge the issues that continue to plague. Uh, people of color, uh, poor people in general, and um, we do it in many ways through protests, through leafleting uh, an institution. Uh, this Friday, uh, we will, uh, this Thursday, we will be in the governor's office. His practices have taken us back almost to Jim Crow days. Is that where so? We have a police state troopers class, 80 total people in it, and no women, one African American, where you have a transportation. Uh, hiring when the new administration comes in, 374 people hired in the transportation cabinet and only three were African-American. 
Uh, so we challenge these type of practices through uh, third party EEOC complaints and this Thursday we'll have a sit-in in his office uh, uh, so that we know what that means. We're going to do it late in the evening around four o'clock and we're not going to leave his office until we get some answers and we have to do these type of things. Uh, uh -huh. uh, this, uh, uh, this Friday we'll be in, uh, in front of a Thornton's uh, gasoline station which has uh, uh, been uh, uh, has mistreated uh, the managers mistreated uh, several individuals that work on that job and we were written to the corporate manager asking him let's meet let's try to resolve the issue we haven't received any response so we'll be in protest to educate people to stay out of Thornton's until this issue is resolved um, tomorrow which will be uh, Thursday we hope to file a lawsuit against Louisville Gas and Electrolyte Company for their unbelievable um, utility bill and uh, hike, and um, we're going to file a lawsuit against the Public Service Commission too, because they work hand in hand together. And so that those are the type of things we do, and the lawsuit will be to stop them to get a moratorium on any other rate increases until this company can justify a rate increase. Just by going to the Public Service Commission doesn't justify it because we believe they're in, they're in the same living room together. Uh -huh. <laughs> I could have said that different, <laughs> but we believe they're in the same living room together. And uh, so we're going to challenge that. But those are just a couple of things that we're doing this week alone. Uh -huh. How many years have you been involved in, in social justice issues, uh, formally or informally? Since 1969. I uh, graduated from Kentucky State University in 1968, and as soon as I got out, I began to work with an organization called the Little Urban League. And uh -huh. the Urban League was, uh, was an agency that was involved in human rights and civil rights activity. Uh -huh. And so that's where I got my start, I'm from a gentleman named Arthur M. Walters, who worked under Whitney M. Young, Jr. Uh -huh. um, but uh, and, and and what did you major in at Kentucky State? Uh, health and physical education. Really? And uh, my, so you're an athlete. Well, I uh, I had a little stint in Major League Baseball for a while. No kidding. Uh, I uh, uh, I'm not bragging. I, that's all I wanted to be. That's all I wanted to be when I was a kid. Ever since I was six or seven years old, that's all I wanted to be was a Major League Baseball player uh -huh. because I was just inspired by the Jackie Robinson story. Uh huh. Just Me too. Inspired. I tell you, Me too. He, he was he he was he he was my hero. It's still my hero. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, every day at Central High, uh, my other. Uh, classmate who was a year ahead of me. That was uh -uh. Muhammad Ali. Oh yeah. And uh, I was in his brother's class, Rudy, but Ali uh -huh. was a year ahead. Uh, we stayed on the track after school every day, running around, the, running around the track to stay in shape for our particular sport. Really? And um, uh, and, and it's it's amazing. Our ideals and our ideas are almost match one another. I guess it's the era that we came from, the generation that we came from, and most of the things that uh, he believed in, I believe in also. And it's amazing when ever the African American newspaper comes out, and the Lord Defender, how many times that he and I are on almost the same page together. And I don't even come close to matching the great accomplishments of what this man has done. Uh, he he was a worldwide appeal to the human race. You know, I just yeah. I just commend him on. I just commend him on him. And, uh, I'm I'm curious. Can you remember back when when you were like running track with uh, Muhammad Ali? Uh, did you guys talk about? Uh, I don't know. Was Malcolm X around back then? Or we we never what? talked about issues. Uh, uh, what we did talk about. Um, was uh, where's the next party going to be? Uh, <laughs> where's the next party? You know, we're teenagers. You know, we, we want to here, we here. Nobody would accept us. To, and see, when I went to school, you know, you had your different clubs. You'd have a, a club for men, a club for girls, and.